Hey guys, and welcome to your Sunday night Fulham quiz. This is our third uh, instalment of the Fulham quiz. Uh, chuffed to be doing it again, all the way from uh, slightly overcast and sunny in places, dorking um, in front of my very own white wall in my lounge that I've created here. Um, once again, it is going to be four rounds. We've broken up the rounds into categories. First up, round number one, it will be general knowledge. Uh, round number two with the 2008-2009 season, which is um, Fulham's best ever Premier League season. Uh, round number three is all about the one and only Breda Hangeland, uh, Captain Fantastic. And uh, round number four is Who Am I? I'm going to give you a load of clues and uh, you tell us who the player is. It's as simple as that. Uh, so it's going to be, once again, <clears throat> a possible 40 points. Uh, we're going to go through all the questions um, in just a sec. So. Go and grab yourselves a pen and paper now. Cool. No cheating, all right? You're only cheating yourselves. No Googling, no asking Bing uh, or Jeeves. Are they even things anymore? Bing and Jeeves, possibly. It's all about Google, isn't it? But no cheating, whatever you do. Uh, we are then going to, once we've gone through uh, the four rounds, I'm going to give you five minutes to go through your answers, to grab yourselves a cup of tea, maybe a beer, something to eat, a little sandwich or something. <laughs> and uh, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you the answers. Uh, to this and you can, guys can let us know on Twitter how you got on. I'm hoping that you're improving with every quiz that goes by. Um, I think that seems to be what happened last time. Most people improved on uh, their first quiz um, when it came to the second quiz. Hopefully this one now, you're, you're going to keep inching towards getting a perfect mark. We will see. But if you're ready, pens and paper to hand, let's do this. Your Sunday night Fulham quiz, round one, general knowledge. Question number one, how many players have scored for Fulham at Wembley Stadium? So question number one, how many players have scored for Fulham at Wembley Stadium? <clears throat> Gonna have a little sip of coffee. I'm trying to give you enough time to answer these. I'm gonna be attempting uh, to fill the silences with um, a bit of chit chat. Uh, a little bit of uh, a few little uh, bits of info, cheeky little facts for you. Let's see how I get on. <clears throat> There's enough time. Question number one. Okay, question number two. Which current Fulham player signed for the club in July 2015? So question number two. Which current Fulham player signed for the club in July 2015? Now I figure there probably aren't that many players who we signed that have been here for five years or so. So I don't think it's going to be too tricky. I mean, there'll be a few players, but you know, not often players stay at, club for, uh, stay at clubs for um, five years. So have a little think. Uh, question number three, how many points do Fulham have in the current championship season? <clears throat> Question number three, how many points do Fulham have in the current championship season? No cheating, no looking at the Fulham app. You can do this. It's not been that long since you last looked at the table, I'm sure. How many points do Fulham currently have? Question number four. What could Jean Tigana often be seen chewing during the games? Question number four. What could Jean Tigana often be seen chewing during the games? Now, I figure this is an easy question because I know the answer. And if I know the answer, I figure it must be an easy question because I've got the worst memory ever for this sort of stuff, like proper goldfish memory. So if I know it, you guys should all know this. All right, so moving on, question number five. Who was the most recent player to score at Craven Cottage? Question number five, who was the most recent player to score at Craven Cottage? Not that long ago, was it? Uh, probably a, it's about a month and a half, maybe more. So maybe closer to two months ago now, two months. Flown by, hasn't it? Two months, oh my word. So it was the last player to score. Oh my word. 
I think most people will know that. Question number six. Uh, which three Fulham players scored in our 3-2 comeback win over Spurs in September 2002? Um, so which three Fulham players scored in our 3-2 comeback uh, win over Spurs in September 2002? Uh, now, you guys should know this if you watch the uh, the relived Spurs game that uh, they did recently on the Fulham website. Just want to say at this point, massive uh, sort of kudos and love for what Fulham are doing at the moment with these relived games. Obviously, uh, most recently this week, we had the Hamburg semi-final, which is my favourite Fulham game of all time. And um, it was a joy reliving that, reliving every single moment and the commentaries as well. Like yeah, I, those com they, those commentaries are, are so iconic to me now and uh, I can't hear them without getting goosebumps. But an absolute joy. Loved following it on Twitter. So massive respect to that. So obviously we are not talking about the Hamburg one though, we are talking about the Spurs one. So have a little rack of your brains, but uh, which three Fulham players scored in our 3-2 comeback win over Spurs in September 2002? Question number seven, how many times did we travel to the Majeski Stadium in the 2016-17 season? How many times did we travel to the Majeski Stadium in the 2016-17 season? It's a funny little stadium that, in the fact it's not actually that little, is it? But it's quite plastic. It's kind of, you know, no disrespect, but it's just a bit, it's almost like it's a Lego. Someone built a stadium out of Lego and sort of plonked it by a motorway you know, near a kind of industrial park. It's not a terrible stadium. It's just not, let's be honest, it's not Craven Cottage, is it? But it's, uh, no, it's a funny one, isn't it? <laughs> no disrespect, obviously, to any Reading fans. Okay, uh, question number eight. I think I'm filling the, uh, the silences beautifully here, aren't I? Uh, question number eight. Who was Fulham's goalkeeper in the FA Youth Cup final in 2014? So uh, question number eight, who was Fulham's goalkeeper in the FA Youth Cup final in 2014? All right. I like to not look at the answers for these to see how well I do. And I know right now I'd be thinking, right, our youth players, who have been our youth goalkeepers, youth, not youth, youth goalkeepers of the last sort of, you know, five, ten years, who have we got on the list? Who would have played that FA Cup final in 2014? I don't think there's too many to choose from. Question number nine, rank these captains in terms of Fulham appearances from most to least. Chris Coleman, Johnny Haynes, Danny Murphy, and Alan Mullery. So rank these captains in terms of Fulham appearances from most to least. Chris Coleman, Johnny Haynes, Danny Murphy, or Alan Mullery. And take this moment to have another sip of coffee. Why you guys all argue that out? Also, keep an eye on my dog, who's uh, just laid some new turf in the garden. I feel like during this lockdown, everyone's gardens are going to be looking incredible. But yeah, I've laid some turf, and uh, my lovely dog, but very naughty dog, has decided to um, uh, to eat the turf, um, which makes me very angry. So I'm currently trying to keep an eye on him. Make sure he's not attempting to uh, digest what we've just paid a few hundred quid for. I don't think so. Right. I think that's enough filling. Question number 10, the final question of our general knowledge Fulham round. What was the score when Fulham played Real Madrid in a pre-season friendly in 2006? What was the score when... F it's embarrassing. Hang that up, call them back in a bit. Uh, what was the score when Fulham played Real Madrid in a pre-season friendly in 2006? Uh, again, I, I know the answer to this, um, so I feel like it could be. It's not, often, it's not often Fulham play Real Madrid, so I feel like most people should know this. But that is your final question to the Fulham General Knowledge Round. I am just gonna call the person back and apologize for hanging up on them. Uh, but in just a second, we will move on to round number two. Right, round number two. This is the 2008-2009 season round, our best ever Premier League season. So question number one. Mark Schwarzer was our first summer signing, but how much uh, did we pay for him? 
So Mark Schwarzer was our first summer signing of the season, but how much did we pay for him? What a keeper. What a keeper, what a hero, what a man. How much did we pay for Mark Schwarzer? Question number two, in the same transfer window, which midfielder did we sign from Sunderland? So in the same transfer window, which midfielder did we sign from Sunderland? Rack your brain, have a little think. Not sure this one's too tricky. I think most people should get it. Uh, question number three, who did we play and what was the score in our first game of that season? So who did we play and what was the score in our first game of the season? Okay, so I need the exact score and uh, the team and it's only one point for both of those. That's right. It's a strict, strict quiz I run and I would say I run, but I, I'm not making the rules up here. This is the Fulham lot. They're being strict with you, not me. All right, don't shoot the messenger. So who do we play and what was the score in our first game of the season? Question number four, who opened their account for Fulham in the first Craven Cottage outing of the season? Who opened their account for Fulham in the first Craven Cottage outing of the season? I'm, I'm going to be nice and give you a bit of a clue in the fact that this is a big goal, a big result. It was big. It's big. Who opened their account for Fulham in the first Craven Cottage outing uh, of the season? Question number five. Jimmy Bullard's first Fulham goal uh, from open play came in December against which side? So, question number five, Jimmy Bullard's first Fulham goal from open play came in December against which side? So my little dog started barking. I really don't want to bring him in because he literally won't leave me alone if I bring him in. Just shut him outside. I'm just hoping it doesn't start raining. He might make a, a bit of noise in the background. Apologies. There we go. He's a very happy dog. He's just very needy. Very needy dog. Okay. Question number six. Who left Fulham in the January transfer window for five million? So question number six. Who left Fulham in the January transfer window for five million? Why would anyone do that? Who'd want to, who'd want to leave Fulham for five million? So who was it that left Fulham in the January transfer window for five million in our 2008, 2009 season? Question number seven is a simple one to the point. Who was Fulham's top scorer that season? Who was Fulham's <laughs> top scorer that season? <laughs> one moment. One moment, Steve, I promise you. One moment. <laughs> Who was Fulham's? That's going to be really annoying the neighbours. Who was Fulham's top scorer? Question number eight. Uh, who was Fulham's biggest win of the season against? So who was Fulham's biggest win of the season against? <laughs> oh man in a moment I promise you I promise you <laughs> oh man right okay uh, who was Fulham's biggest win of the season against that was question number 8 question number 9 who were Fulham competing with uh, for the final European place with seventh spot still up for grabs on the final day of the season? 
Who were Fulham competing with for the final European place with seventh spot still up for grabs on the final day of the season? I think he's lost interest now. He's gone for a little wonder. I'm going to have a sip of coffee then. He does love it outside and it's not raining. So, you know, I figure, it's, you know, he needs to get a bit of fresh air, a little bit of a run around. It's good for him. So, who are Fulham competing with for the final European place with seventh spot set up for grabs on the final day of the season? And finally, question number 10, this is the final question for our 2008-2009 round. Two outfield, outfield players were ever present in the league this season. Name one of them. So two outfield players were ever present in the league this season. Name one of them. Okay. I think that's a relatively easy one to end the, uh, the round on. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a second just to go over your answers. I'm going to go and let my dog Steve in. Um, otherwise, he's going to have a little nervous breakdown. Bless him. Um, and I'm going to be back in a second with the third round. Okay, so uh, round number three. This round is all about the one and only Breda Hangerland. So here we go. Question number one. Which English side did Breda knock out of the UEFA Cup with Viking Stravanger in 2002? So, question number one. Which English side did Breda knock out of the UEFA Cup with Viking Stravanger in 2002? Hmm. Right. Question number two. Which club did we sign Breda from? Which club did we sign Breda from? And what a signing. I mean, he, I mean he's, he's, he's been one of our best defenders ever, hasn't he? Fantastic player. What a signing. Which club did we sign him from? Have a think. Question number three. His Fulham debut saw us secure a clean sheet against which side? Question number three. His Fulham debut saw us secure a clean sheet against which side? The first clean sheet of many with him in the squad. Like I said, a fantastic defender. Um, yeah. Really was a great player. Which side did... Uh, did he secure a clean sheet against on his debut? Okay, question number four. What squad number did, the, did he first wear for Fulham? Question number four. What squad number did he first wear... For Fulham. What was his squad number when he first joined? Question number five. What name did Fulham fans give to the immovable partnership formed between Hangeland and Aaron Hughes? I mean, come on. We should all know this. What name did Fulham fans give to the immovable partnership formed between Hangeland and Aaron Hughes? I feel like most people should know this. Most people are going to get this right. Question number six. How many red cards did Breda Hangeland receive whilst playing for Fulham? How many red cards did Breda receive whilst playing for Fulham. Question number seven. At how many clubs did Roy Hodgson manage Hangeland? How many clubs did Roy Hodgson manage Hangeland?
Okay. Question number eight. Breda scored one brace during his time at Fulham. Against which side? So question number eight. Breda scored one brace during his time at Fulham. Against which side? Racking your brains with this one. Uh, question number nine. We've got multiple choice here, so you've got a good chance of getting this right. One in four. So how many times did Breda play for Fulham? Okay, was it 232 times, 252 times, 272 times, or 292 times? So how many times did Breda play for Fulham? 232, 252, 272, or 292? One in four chance of getting that right. How many times did he play for Fulham? All right. And the final question from our Breda Hangland round, uh, and it's, an, it's a goldie. This is a brilliant question. Uh, which cheese did Felix Magat suggest Breda use to treat an injury? Ah, which cheese did Felix Magat suggest Breda use to treat an injury? I remember when this first came out, I thought this can't be real. This just has to be those sort of weird rumours that come out and they're just nonsense. Uh, but turns out it wasn't. It really wasn't. This actually happened. So which cheese famously did Felix Magat suggest Breda use to treat an injury? And on that incredible note, uh, we finish round number three. Uh, have a little look through your answers. It is out of a possible 10. Going to be back in a second with round number four. Okay, uh, the final round, round number four. This is Who Am I? I'm going to give you a series of clues. You've got to guess which Fulham player, uh, past or present, I am. Okay, so here we go. Number one. My brief stints at Chelsea, it's a shame, and Manchester City were sandwiched by two goal-laden spells at Fulham. So uh, my brief stints at Chelsea and Manchester City were sandwiched by two goal-laden spells at Fulham. Who is that? Who could that be about? I feel like I need to give you a little bit more time with these to really have a think. Give yourselves a chance. But bear in mind, after this round, you are going to have five minutes to go through your answers, make sure you're happy, and then I'm going to uh, give you the answers myself. So don't stress too much. Just make a couple of notes if you can't think, if you need a little bit more time. We're going to move on to question number two. I was signed as a forward, but excelled in midfield before Tottenham Hotspur met my buyout clause. I was signed as a forward, but excelled in midfield before Tottenham Hotspur met my buyout clause. It's a sad day for fans, I think, when uh, that happened. Very sad day. So I was signed as a forward, but excelled in midfield before Spurs met my buyout clause. Okay, if you need a bit more time, make some notes. Come back to it. So question uh, number three. I won two promotions with Fulham before winning the Champions League with my next club. So number three, I won two promotions with Fulham before winning the Champions League with my next club. Who could that be about? There aren't too many players that that could be about. Have a think. So two promotions with Fulham before winning the Champions League with my next club. Okay. Number four, after 15 loan spells, I now feel at home heading bricks for a living at Craven Cottage. Uh, so after 15 loan spells, I now feel at home, and quite right, 
heading bricks for a living at Craven Cottage. Who heads bricks for a living at Craven Cottage? Who could that be about? After 15 loan spells. I think most people will know that one. So I'm going to move on to number five. Uh, I won Euro 2004 and only scored worldies for Fulham. I mean... I mean, there's only one player this can be. I won Euro 2004 and I only scored worldies for Fulham, which is true. He did. Utter worldies, absolute screamers. So number six, I'm going to move on to number six because I feel that one was quite easy. I once made 19 saves in a single game against Newcastle United, including one with my face to deny Patrick Clivert. Cliver, but Patrick Cliver. So I once made 19 saves in a single game against Newcastle United, uh, including one with my face to deny Patrick Cliver. Okay, number seven. I joined Fulham on deadline day after getting a call from Martin Yol, having initially been on my way to Fior um, Fiorentina. So I joined Fulham on deadline day after getting a call from Martin Yo, uh, having initially been on my way to uh, Fiorentina. Again, I think most people are going to know uh, who that is. So I am going to move on to number eight, which is Chris Coleman signed me for Fulham and I'm still at the club as a coach. Who is that about? Chris Coleman signed me for Fulham and I'm still at the club as, as a coach. Can't be too many people that that could be about. So, I'm gonna move on to number nine. I joined Fulham from West Ham in a joint deal with Bobby Zamora. Who is that? Joined Fulham from West Ham in a joint deal with Bobby Zamora. Who could that be? I joined Fulham from West Ham in a joint deal with Zamora. And finally, I came through, this is number 10, I came through the Youth Academy and my only goal for the club was the winner against Norwich City in October 2014. So I came through the Youth Academy and my only goal for the club was the winner against Norwich City in October 2014. Who is that about? Tough one to end on, I think. Best of luck. Uh, now, that is the final question of round number four and the final question of our Sunday night Fulham quiz. Uh, I'm going to give you five minutes now to go over any, uh, any uh, questions that you were maybe stuck on. If you put any notes, you need a bit of uh, time to think. Uh, if you've nailed it and you're happy with your answers, go make yourself a cup of tea, maybe grab a beer out of the fridge. I'm going to be back in five minutes with the answers for you.
Okay, that is it. Time is up. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to go through your answers and uh, make sure that you are happy with what you've put down. Uh, maybe you've had a bit of time as well to uh, enter the fridge, grab yourself a beer, maybe a glass of wine. Uh, but now it's time to go through the answers. Let's see how you got on. So uh, round number one was general knowledge. Question one, how many players have scored for Fulham at Wembley Stadium? The answer, two. Two players have scored for Fulham at Wembley Stadium. I think a number of you would have just put one thinking it was Tom Kearney in the player final. But Alexander Mitrovic uh, also scored at Wembley when we played Spurs in the following season. So the answer is two. Uh, question number two, which current Fulham player signed for the club in July 2015? Tom Kearney. Tom Kearney. He signed on Friday the 26th of June, uh, two days after my birthday and uh, a lovely present to receive. Did not know at the time just how good um, a player uh, he would become for us. Massive player. Brilliant. Uh, a little side note, because a number of you might have put Tim Ream. He arrived one month later. So the answer, Tim Ream. Question number three, how many points do Fulham have in the current championship season? Uh, I think a number of you would still remember. It's not been too long. Uh, the answer, 64. We are currently on 64 points. 64. 18 wins and 10 draws in there. Not too bad at all. Solid third in the table. Uh, question number four, what could Jean Tigonard often be seen chewing, uh, chewing during the games? I feel like most of you guys should know this. It's a toothpick. Of course it's a toothpick. It's a habit that he picked up after giving up smoking. Uh, it always looks pretty cool. It looks a little bit like, um, I was the, uh, the, the movie star that does it like, uh, John Wayne guy. Hey, thinking on camera always looks good. Oh, who is he? Like, is it is it John Wayne? Maybe it's John Wayne I'm thinking of. I swear it's not. That'll come to me. I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> Can't think at all. You guys are probably screaming at me right now or screaming for me to get on, which I will do. Question number five was, uh, who was the most recent player to score at Craven Cottage? The answer was Abubakar Kamara. He scored in the 95th minute of our 2-0 win over Preston in our last match at the cottage. So Abubakar Kamara, Clint Eastwood. That's who I was thinking of with the toothpick, doesn't he? Dirty Harry, is that right? He has the toothpick, Clint Eastwood. Not an answer to any question, just someone else that looked cool with a toothpick. Uh, so Abubakar Kamara was the answer to uh, question number five. Question number six, which three players scored in our 3-2 comeback win over Spurs in September 2002? Uh, and you should know this if you watch the, um, uh, the relived games that we had recently. Uh, and the answer was Yunichi Inamoto, Steve Malbronk, Sylvain Legvinsky. So Inamoto, Malbronk, and Legvinsky. Question number seven. How many times did we travel to the Majeski Stadium in the 2016-2017 season? The answer, and again, I think most of you would have remembered this because it was quite unique. It was three. Um, we had uh, originally scheduled league match, but it, uh, league match, but it was called off after 45 minutes because of insane fog. It was crazy. Uh, we had the rearranged game, and then again uh, we had the playoff uh, game as well. Uh, question number eight: Who was Fulham's goalkeeper in the FA Youth Cup final in 2014? The answer was Marek Rodak, the one and only fantastic keeper. So one of our own, Marek Rodak. Uh, question number nine, rank these captains in terms of Fulham appearances from most to least. Uh, you've got Chris Coleman, uh, Johnny Haynes, Danny Murphy, and Alan Mullery. So from most to least, number one was Johnny Haynes with 658 appearances for the club. Uh, next was Mullery with 411 appearances. Uh, then was Murphy with 210 appearances. Then finally, Chris Coleman with 165 appearances for the club. So Haynes, Mullery, Murphy, then Coleman. Uh, question number 10, what was the score when Fulham, th <laughs> Fulham thrashed Real Madrid in a pre-season friendly in 2006? It was nil-nil, we thrashed them nil-nil. And yeah, that's right, it's a thrashing. We thrashed them nil-nil because it was a side uh, that featured players like uh, Casillas, Ramos, Guti, and Raul. Nil-nil. Very, very credible result there. Round number two was the 2008-2009 season. Fulham's best ever Premier League season. 
Uh, Mark Schwarzer was our first summer signing, but how much did we pay for him? The answer, nothing. Bit of a trick question for you there. It was nothing. Uh, his contract with Middlesbrough was up, so he joined on a free, rejecting Juventus and buying Munich in the process. Uh, wise man. Wise man, Mark Schwarzer. Of course he would reject uh, Juventus and buy Munich when he could join Fulham. Beautiful decision. Uh, number two, uh, in the same transfer window, which midfielder did we sign from Sunderland? Uh, for a reported 1.5 million, it was Dixon Atuhu. Dixon Atuhu, again, a wicked player for the club. Uh, who did we play uh, and what was the score in our first game of the season? We played Hull City and Hull won 2-1. Um, Sol Ki um, uh, Hyun, I got that right, I think. Uh, Sol Ki Hyun. Uh, put us in front, but Giovanni and uh, Folan won it for Hull in their first Premier League game. Uh, who opened their account for Fulham in the first Craven Cottage outing of the season? This is it was a big, big game, big result. Breda Hanglin scored the winner against Arsenal. What a game. We remember it well. Uh, question number five was Jimmy Bullard's first Fulham goal uh, from open play came in December against which side? It was Manchester City in a one-all draw at the Cottage at the start of the month. His only other goal from open play uh, came against Middlesbrough a couple of weeks later. Uh, question number six, who left Fulham in January transfer window for five million? Uh, a lot of people will remember that. It's Jimmy Bullard. He joined Hull City. I'm not sure it was the uh, the cleanest uh, way a player's left in the past. I think a lot of people a bit upset. But, you know, he's spoken about it since and he's a top, top bloke. Really, really nice guy. Uh, who was Fulham's top scorer? Andrew Johnson. Uh, he had 10. Uh, he scored 10 goals, uh, seven in the Premier League and three in the FA Cup. Clint Dempsey was second with eight goals in all competitions. So, number seven, who was Fulham's top scorer? Andrew Johnson. Question number eight, who was Fulham's biggest win of the season against... It was Middlesbrough. We beat them 3-0 and uh, it was at the Cottage in December and we had goals from Danny Murphy, Jimmy Bullard and Clint Dempsey. Question number nine. Who were Fulham uh, competing with for the final European place with seven spots still up for grabs on the final day of the season? It was Spurs. Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, Fulham actually uh, lost 2-0 to Everton on the final day, but Spurs also lost to Liverpool, which meant we finished two points above them. So there we are. And question number 10, two outfield players were ever present in the league this season. Name one of them. So you could have had uh, Danny Murphy or Aaron Hughes. They both started all 38 Premier League matches. An amazing achievement. Uh, a lot of people probably would have said Breda Hangeland, but he missed our Boxing Day draw at White Hart Lane as he had the flu. Uh, John Pansel also played in all but one of our league games. So Danny Murphy or Aaron Hughes. Okay, uh, our next round was all about Breda Hangeland. Question one, which English side did Breda knock out of the UEFA Cup with Viking Stravanger in 2002? Chelsea. The answer, <laughs> Chelsea. 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 So, which English side did Breda knock out of the UEFA Cup with Viking Stravanger in 2002? Chelsea. Uh, which club did we sign Breda from? Uh, it was FC. Copenhagen, or FC Copenhagen, as they might say in Copenhagen. Uh, so that's question number two. Which club did we sign Breda from? FC Copenhagen. Uh, question number three. His Fulham debut saw us secure a clean sheet against which side? It was Bolton Wanderers. And um, we drew nil-nil at the Reebok Stadium. Question number four. What squad number did he first wear for Fulham? I think this one, this was quite a tough one. Uh, but the answer was 32. It was number 32. He then took the number five shirt uh, when Philippe uh, Christenval left the club in the summer. So the answer was 32. Question number five. Uh, what name did Fulham fans give to the immovable partnership formed between Hangel and Aaron Hughes? I hope that you all got this right. Uh, it was, of course, the Thames Barrier. Absolutely beautiful nickname for the pair of them. Spot on. So the Thames Barrier. Uh, question number six. How many red cards did Breda Hanglin received whilst playing for Fulham? Uh, it was just one. He received just one. It was in a home defeat by Sunderland in November 2012. Uh, and this is true in, due, in, in true uh, gentleman fashion. Breda actually, uh, after the game, uh, went into the referee's room to apologise for the challenge afterwards, which sums him up as a person. Proper gent. Lovely bloke. 
Question number seven. At how many clubs did Roy Hodgson manage Hangland? The answer, two. Uh, it was Vikings Stravanger and Fulham. Um, they both had spells at Copenhagen and Crystal Palace, but not at the same time. So that might have thrown a few of you guys, but the answer was two. Uh, question number eight. Breda scored one brace during his time at Fulham against which side? It was Birmingham City. He scored both goals in a 2-0 win at St Andrews towards the end of the 2010-11 season. Uh, question number nine. How many times did Breda play for Fulham? Was it 232, 252, 272 or 292? The answer... 272 times. He's also our record Premier League appearance maker with 217 appearances to his name, which is incredible. But we're looking for 272. Uh, question number 10. Which cheese <laughs> did Felix Magat suggest Breda use to treat an injury? I mean, it's not even a good cheese. It's a rubbish cheese. It's quark. I mean, it's the worst cheese. Just, it's like kind of like some milky health cheese, isn't it? But the answer is quark. There we go. Uh, Magat said in an interview sometime after I suggested he, uh, a tried and trusted method used for centuries of soaking a bandage in quark, uh, which is a very soft cheese mixed with alcohol and then wrapped around his thigh. So there we go. Didn't he also suggest that whilst his, his like injury was wrapped in, in soft cheese that he called his mum? Or am I imagining that? Was that something that was made up? But I swear there was something about, call your mum, tell her you love her. <laughs> I don't know. The final round, number four. Um, who am I? Okay, so here we go. My brief stints at Chelsea and Manchester City were sandwiched by two goal-laden spells at Fulham. The answer to number one was Gordon Davies. Gordon Davies. Number two, I was signed as a forward but excelled in midfield before Tottenham Hotspur met my buyout clause. This was a tough day for Fulham fans. Uh, Moussa Dembele was the answer. Honestly, was gutted to see him go. What a player. Question number three. I won two promotions with Fulham before winning the Champions League with my next club. Tough one. Steve Finnan is the answer. Steve Finnan. Uh, number four. After 15 loan spells, I now feel at home heading bricks for a living at Craven Cottage. Well, I tell you what, this is your home now and you can stay for as long as you like. Okay. The answer. Michael Hector. Michael Hector. Question number five. I won Euro 2004 and only scored worldies for Fulham, which is totally true. You guys all should have got this. He absolutely uh, just loved an absolute screamer of a goal. It was uh, gorgeous Karagounis. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, but I did love Karagounis. What a lovely guy. Uh, so much enthusiasm and energy. So uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, however you want to write it. Uh, George's Karagounis. Uh, question number six. I once made 19 saves in a single game against Newcastle United, including one with my face to deny Patrick Clivert. It was Mark Crossley. Um, and also, side note for you, Graham uh, Souness was actually sent off in this game. Uh, so the answer, Mark Crossley. Uh, question number seven. I joined Fulham on deadline day after getting a call from Martin Yole, having initially been on my way to uh, Fiorentina. Uh, it was, of course, uh, Dimitar Berbatov. A very, very surreal day, I think, for a lot of Fulham fans where when Berber um, signed for Fulham. It was insane. I remember not quite believing it. Uh, incredibly skilled player. Uh, question number eight. Chris Coleman signed me for Fulham and I'm still at the club as a coach. There aren't many. Hopefully you got this. Mark Pembridge is the answer. Mark Pembridge. Uh, question number nine. I joined Fulham from West Ham in a joint deal with Bobby Zamora. The answer... John Pansil, the one and only John Pansil. And finally, uh, I think a bit of a tough one to end on, but I came through the Youth Academy and my only goal for the club was the winner against Norwich City in October 2014. The answer was Sean Kavanagh. There we go, Sean Kavanagh. That was the uh, final answer to your quiz. Uh, you got a possible um, 40 points there. Total it all up um, and then let us know on Twitter how you guys got on, uh, hopefully you did better than you did. Uh, and the last two quizzes, you know, you want to be, uh, feel like you're making improvements. Um, but listen, it's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've really, really loved doing it. Um, hopefully we'll do a few more of these uh, Fulham quizzes. Um, but uh, once again, as always, guys, uh, stay safe, look after yourselves. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys back at the cottage uh, really, really soon. Come on, Fulham.